Hi, we're going to look at some examples in this in the next few videos about limits of multivariable functions. So uh, we have here a function f of x, y equals x to the fourth minus y to the fourth over x squared plus y squared. So you should be able to look at that function and think about the domain of that function. Uh, the domain of that function is going to be everything except uh, the point zero, zero, the origin. Um, so that's not exactly what it's asking here, but that is relevant for thinking about this. Uh, so the domain is all of R2, except 0, 0. 0, 0 would make the denominator 0, so that's obviously not in the domain, and that's the only point at which we would have trouble. All right, so even if it didn't ask us to find a limit as x, y approach the origin, that is the relevant limit to find for this function that we have here. Remember that really the power of limits is about dealing with functions where we have something strange going on. So sometimes that's about domain issues. Um, all right, so this is asking us not to plug in 0, 0. That's not what limits are about. It's asking us to think about what happens to the function outputs of this function when our points x, y are close, infinitely close to the point 0, 0. So we want to think about if those function outputs uh, grow infinitely large, grow uh, in size but in the negative direction, approach a number, or maybe do all kinds of different things uh, when x, y is close to the origin. All right, so you might think back to limits from calculus one and your tools for limits from calculus one. Uh, occasionally, for a limit question, you can get away with plugging in the point, even though that's never what a limit's really asking about. Obviously, we can't do that here because of this domain issue. Um, and then you might think about some other problems you did in calculus one that involve perhaps doing some algebra to simplify the function, and then maybe you can get away with doing that plugging in using a substitution shortcut. Um, so thinking back to the calculus one types of problems you did, and remembering uh, simplification techniques that you might have used, you might recognize that there is some simplification that I can do here. You have to do the algebra correctly, so don't make up your own invalid algebra here. Uh, but I might notice that this numerator is a difference of squares, and if I factor the numerator, I'll have a common factor from the numerator and the denominator that will cancel. So, uh, just like in Calc 1, I should have this limb out front until I actually evaluate the limit. Uh, the numerator here factors into x squared plus y squared times x squared minus y squared. And then I'm just going to put parentheses around the denominator here. I haven't really factored it. But I did that to emphasize that I have this common factor of x squared plus y squared here. So I can cancel this factor. Uh, and when I do that, I'm just left with this x squared minus y squared. I don't really need parentheses around that, but I'm going to put them there just to emphasize that's that factor that's left here. Okay, so a couple things I want to point out. We're almost ready to find the answer here for this limit question, but a couple things I want to point out. One is that the original function that we talked about here has a domain that's all of R2 except the origin. This function that I have here is not the same as the original function. This function that I have now has a domain that is all of R2. So if they have different domains, then they are not the same function. Um, but as we get close to the origin, then these two functions have the same limit. So it's important to understand that this original function and this simplified version of the function are not really the same function. They are the same, though, everywhere except any place that would make this factor zero. So these two functions are the same everywhere except at the origin. All right, and this last function here, 
that I have, uh, the same as the original function everywhere except the origin, is a nice function. I can just substitute in 0, 0 to finish this limit question. Remember, that's not really what limits are asking about, but sometimes you can use that substitution shortcut that's transfer from some function uh, and limit rules from Calculus 1 that you can use a substitution shortcut as long as your function uh, is a rational function and its denominator is not 0 uh, at the point that you are approaching. So we can finish this by just plugging in 0. And that's what we get for our limit. Okay, so uh, we want to not only be able to get the answer, but be sure we're clear that we understand what that answer means. So we're going to look at a graph of the function in just a second here. Um, but I want to emphasize this original function that we're talking about, the f of xy equals x to the fourth minus y to the fourth over x squared plus y squared does not have a point at the origin. 0, 0 is not in the domain of that function. But what this limit tells us is that this function gets close to 0. The outputs of that function get close to 0 when our input is close to the origin. So the outputs of this function are close to 0 when the inputs of the function the points are close to the origin. Right? There is no actual point at the origin for this function because that point is not in the domain of the original function. Let's look at the computer. All right, so here on the computer, you can see that I've graphed, this is plot 3 d and I've graphed our function z equals x to the fourth minus y to the fourth over x squared plus y squared. And you can see when I look at this, uh, and as I rotate this around, we can see that it really just looks like a saddle graph. Uh, if you think about the simplified version of the function, z equals x squared minus y squared, you might recognize that as a hyperbolic paraboloid. It's kind of one of the classic examples we've looked at. And um, one of the things that's important as you look at these computer-generated graphs is that it is not evident from looking at this computer-generated graph that there's not actually a point at the origin. The way the computer creates these graphs is it plots a bunch of points and connects them. And unless it tries to plot a point that happens to actually be at the origin, it might appear that there's actually a point at the origin. But there should actually be no point at the origin, right there where my cursor is. If I were going to actually have a correct graph of this function, there should really be a hole right there at the origin. You see that the z values are all approaching 0 when xy is close to the origin, but there should not actually be a point there at the origin. Technology often has difficulty when you have restricted domains of functions unless you tell it specifically to plot a point exactly at that point. It may not notice that there uh, is not a point there. Um, so you should just be aware of that when you look at graphs of these functions and you're thinking about limits, uh, especially when you have restricted domains. We'll look at some other graphs, though, uh, where we can see that there's really some interesting stuff going on. And uh, we'll maybe be able to see uh, some strange behavior as we approach points that are not in the domain of our function.